Hi, I'm Craig Rowland from Sandfly Security. Today we're going to be going over some basic command line forensics in the PROC file system under Linux. We're going to be hunting for a suspicious binary that we caught running on the system. I'm going to show you how to do some of that now. Now, I had some people write me some questions about doing more command line forensics. I have a command line forensics cheat sheet available on the website. Also, my Twitter feed, I've been putting out various one-line commands you can run. But some people wanted to see some live activity of my doing it, and that's what we're going to do. What I'm doing today is we're going to simulate what a piece of malware would do using just a basic command on Linux that you can run yourself. It's completely non-destructive, so I encourage you to go out and play with this on your own. Now, today what we've done is we have a basic Linux system. I am in the temp directory. The reason we're gonna do our stuff here is because a lot of Linux malware finds itself in the temp directory or in dev SHM directory, and this is because these directories are two things. They're world writable, and uh, number two is they're always available on every Linux system. So if you have an automated piece of malware, these are great things to have because they know they can always write their files and they're always available so they're not going to get any errors. So that's why we're working on attempt today. What we're going to do is we're going to use the sleep command and we're going to make it look like cron is running. So this way you can do it on your system and not cause any damage. Okay, so we're going to do sleep and we're going to copy it to our current directory. We see here we have it here under cron. And what we're going to do now is export path equals, I'm going to say run everything in the current directory, and then check the path. So what I'm doing here now, instead of needing to do dot slash cron and all that stuff, we could just run cron, which is really sleep. I'm going to say sleep for 3,600 seconds and then exit, and the ampersand is put you in the background. So now sleep is up and going. It's been renamed as cron. How do I know this? Um, we can run right now, we do PSAUX, and we can see it down here running as a command called cron with this um, extra tag on the end. As you can see up here, this is another cron, this is the legitimate cron, but down here we have another command called cron with this on here. This could be something you could completely overlook. This, what I'm just showing you here is something called process masquerading. This is when a piece of malware will alter its command line or what it looks like to the kernel in order to look like something benign when it actually is not benign at all. Remember the way uh, Linux works is that the binary is in a directory called temp. It doesn't show you the full path to it. You can dig into that, which is what we're gonna do here today. But this is kind of setting up the whole scenario here. This is very, very common what a piece of malware is gonna do. Now, what we're gonna do when we find our suspicious process, we're gonna to wanna to make a note of that process ID. So here it's 4362. And we're gonna to go to the proc file system, which is a great file system because it's kind of a virtual file system. It's not real in the sense of what you normally think. You actually can't write files to it. Even if you root, you probably have restricted access. You can't really write to it. And a lot of the data you see here is generated on the fly from the kernel as you query it. So it basically gives you access into what the kernel sees as a process without needing to do a bunch of intense, in-depth, low-level memory forensics to get in there. So we're gonna to go to the proc directory with our PID name on the end. So you can see here we're under proc 4362. And at this point, what I would encourage you to do is just take a quick look in here just to kind of see what it lists. This lists a whole bunch of attributes about this particular process. Everything you see here, you could probably cat it out, and that's actually what we're gonna do. You can use the cat command, or if you have the strings command loaded, this might get you a nicer output. But the first thing we're gonna do with any suspicious command is we're gonna run strings com, and that is basically, what is this command saying it is? It says down here, it says it's cron. Okay, we know that, right? Uh, next thing we're gonna do is strings command line. This is going to show you all the command line arguments that this process started with. So you can see here it started with cron, it's 3600. It would show you any other flags that were present on this um, malicious binary when it started as well. That would give you a clue into some other things that are going on. Some things you can get into as well that we're not going to get into in this, this episode, but we will another is um, on status, string status here. So status gives you everything about this process. When it was running, it'll show you the parent process ID, like this is the parent that actually started it. So if I look on the system here, that was what, 4021 or so, you can see that was my shell. So I could see is this shell, if it was still active, is what started this process. And it does some other things too. And what we're gonna look at for our last piece of information today, so I don't overwhelm you too much, is we've looked at what the command is, we looked at what the command line is, and finally we're gonna look at where's that command actually located. Now you can see in the PS command, 
that it didn't show us the full path. You can probably dump this if you use some additional flags, but for a common PS that most people are gonna be running, you might not really see the full path to that file. But if you go to the proc directory, you could see here very clearly, it's gonna show us two things of interest. One is CWD, that stands for Current Working Directory. That is what the kernel is telling you where this process was probably executed from or where it's calling its current working directory. So we would say, first of all, cron and temp as a current working directory is going to be very suspicious. And second of all, the most important thing here, this exe. Exe is a link looking back at the file of the binary itself. So actually, this file is saying the exe points to temp cron. In fact, you could run exe with a command on it. Um, here I do five seconds. It's actually running the sleep command. So you're seeing here, it's gonna empty in five seconds. See, like that. So that actually links back up here, that links to the cron command. I wouldn't recommend doing that with malware, but just so you could see they are one in the same file. So this thing has a couple things that we're going to want to say is probably malicious. Strings, com, it's gonna show us the command as it ran. Strings, command line, it's gonna show us all the command line entries. And ls-alexe in this directory is gonna show us it links to cron, uh, the temp cron here. So with these pieces of information, if the process was not masquerading, this might actually show you what the real process executable was called before it changed itself after it ran. But all these things should be consistent here. A real cron, let's look at what the real cron would be. Real cron here is 758. 758, okay, so we're here now. See what the real cron looks like. So the real cron here, current work directory, varspool cron, that would be correct. And the exe, user sbin cron. So you can see this is actually what the legitimate exe looks like on this versus what we showed on the malicious one showing the temp directory. So that's kind of it, a quick rundown of a quick way you can look into a malicious binary that might be running on the system. Please stay tuned to my channel and my Twitter feed. I'll be having other fast forensics techniques like this. And uh, hopefully you got some enjoyment out of it. Please leave me some feedback. Uh, be sure to follow my Twitter feed as well. Leave feedback there also. I'd love to hear what you think about these episodes I'm gonna be putting out. Thanks again for watching, bye.